So someone actually captured an image of this supposed dark figure that was lurking in the halls. 100 students being possessed at the same time in the same school. Before I knew it, I was looking into the other world. The scariest thing I saw was a face of pure evil. I couldn't escape. I opened my mouth and tried to scream, but no sound came out. Oh, sorry, just uh, typing out my contract for Netflix. Even though there's no paper, we are pitching this show. Welcome back to episode 2 of Mysteries of Asia. That's still the title of this show. Either that or Asia's Mysteries. Let me know in the comments which one you guys prefer or if you have a new title. Today, we're talking about The Screaming Schoolgirls of Kelantan. This story is quite a... Sorry, my secretary was making a lot of noise. I think she wants to be a part of this show. This is Secretary Sushi. Sit down. Okay, we're talking about the Screaming Schools of Kelantan. This story is a disturbing one, a uh, peculiar one. Let's just dive right into it. In 2016, a wave of mass possession hit the state of Kelantan, Malaysia, forcing schools around the state to shut down. Now, imagine this, a possession wave hitting your country, hitting your state, where schools across the country shut down because of this mass possession. Now, if you ask me, that's pretty damn scary. Imagine you're just having lunch and then you hear a scream coming from the corridor of your school and you look to your left and your whole class is being possessed. Your classmates are all being possessed and you're just left there dumbfounded. That's pretty much what happened in Malaysia in 2016. And it all started in the school SKM Pangalan Chapa where they saw a hundred students and teachers supposedly being possessed by an evil entity. So how did that happen and what led up to this event? A senior school staff member claims and I quote, our students were possessed and disturbed by these spirits. We are not sure why it happened. These children can be disobedient and sometimes throw their rubbish around the school grounds. Perhaps they hit some jinns and offended the spirits. So this is an image of the school, SMK Pangkalan Chepa 2 school, where teachers and students have reportedly seen a black figure. So we actually have evidence. Someone so happened to take a picture of this black figure in the school and we'll get to that later. However, this is just one of many cases of mass hysteria that happened in the state of Kelantan, also known as the mass hysteria sterile capital of the world. I've always found it fascinating how humans can be, you know, subtly influenced by others. And it's especially intriguing when groups of people are influenced by the same thing. It's like mass hypnosis of some sort. This is the supposed area where students saw the black figure. It's among these trees. Soon after, more students and even teachers started seeing this strange dark figure. Some claiming to have seen it in the hallways of the school and experiencing a supernatural presence. One teacher told local news channel that she felt a heavy presence was hanging onto her, while another claimed that a black figure was attempting to enter her body. How does that even feel? I feel like a black figure is entering my body. Ah, I, uh, how, how does it, do, do you physically feel it? You guys know that I'm a skeptic for these kind of things. So whenever I hear or read stories like this, I, I'm always intrigued like how it actually feels like. Should I be saying that? Touch wood touch my fake wood desk. Siti Ain, a former student of this school, said the scare lasted hours, but it took months for life to return to normal. This is where it first started. My schoolmates said they saw an elderly woman standing amongst the trees. I couldn't see what they saw, but their reactions were real. So my question is, did they see an elderly woman or did they see a black figure? Or was it both? Was it just a big black elderly woman? Who knows? Soon after all hell broke loose, students began screaming, their frantic cries ricocheting throughout the halls. Some fainted after claiming to have seen the same dark figure, while others started convulsing. Like, that's an image that you guys have of convulsing if you see a dark figure. Reports said that they were in a possessed state and a Form 5 student of Pangalan Chapa School claimed that she was possessed after she saw a Pontianak in the school toilet. My first thoughts, it seems like this school is a target for malevolent forces. Three different spirits entering this school. First, we have a black spirit, we have an elderly woman, and then we have a fucking Pontiana entering this school. What's up with this school? Like, is it sitting on a cursed land? Why does all the spirits and all the demons want to attack this school? Something's not right, something's fishy. I could not believe what I saw. Both my arms began to go numb, and then my mind went blank and I was frozen on the spot. I tried to call out for help, but could not open my mouth. After that, everything went dark. Any of you guys have been possessed before? Is this what it feels like to be possessed? Do you just stand frozen and then you just black out like that? I'm pretty sure some of you guys have stories. I've read a lot of your stories in my comment section in my ghost hunting videos. So let me know what it feels like to be 
possessed. A total of 100 students and teachers were affected by this wave of mass possession. You know, people are saying it's a, a case of mass hysteria, where the more religious ones are saying it's a case of mass possession. But we'll get into the theories later on. This next slide is where it gets interesting. So someone actually captured an image of this supposed dark figure that was lurking in the halls. And you can see that there is clearly a black figure hiding behind the walls, being a cheeky little fucker just hiding behind the wall. I'm not sure why he's so timid. I mean, this ghost is is going around the school, you know, fucking up the whole school, ruining everyone's timetable, ruining everyone's day. The least he could do is just pop up in front of the camera and just say hi. Why does every ghost uh, image or video have to be so dodgy and iffy like that? If this ghost is really terrorizing the school, he should just call his whole gang of ghosts to come up and say hi to the camera. He should call the dark figure, the elderly lady, and the Pontiana. All three of them just pop up and say hi, like a group selfie, a group wifi, right? But why isn't it happening? So the Twitter caption puts a figure supposedly of the apparition caught on camera by a SNK Pangalan Chapatu student. Uh, but I couldn't find the source of the student. I couldn't find who the student was. For all we know, this photo could be doctored or not. I don't know how credible this journalist is. Teachers in the school tried to regain control of the situation by reading verses of the Quran. But when they failed to do so, religious practitioners were then called down to the school to rid it of its evil entities. Officials even went so far as to cut down the trees in the school compound as they believed it to be the source of the problem. Look at the stump of the trees. Poor trees, poor poor trees. From what I know, I don't think it's right to cut down the trees, right? Wouldn't you anger the spirits even more if you cut down their home? Where are they gonna live now? Because the trees are their home, right? So where the fuck are they gonna live now? In the students' bodies? Isn't it a no-no to cut down trees? In the following weeks, three more schools were hit by this wave of body possession phenomenon. Another major case happened in 2018 in SKM Katere, which saw three mass hysteria episodes happening in one month. What do you think the cause of this weird phenomenon is? You can't reply me, so I'll just answer that. Theories. What are the theories to this intriguing case of mass possession? Theory one, stress and anxiety built up from strict conservative cultures. A little background on the state of Kelantan. It is widely known as the most religious and conservative of all states in Malaysia. It is the Islamic heartland of Malaysia and a lot of the people here are subject to rigid religious discipline and a strict dress code. According to medical sociologist Robert Bartholomew, who has studied this phenomenon in Malaysia for decades, it is no coincidence that Kelantan, the most religiously conservative of all Malaysian states, is also the one most prone to outbreaks. So what he's suggesting is that because this state is so conservative and deeply rooted in religion and beliefs in traditional folklore, that they somehow become more susceptible to these waves of mass possession. So the very first case may not even be a possession. Maybe a student was just overwhelmed with anxiety and she just fainted or she just felt a little bit weak and uneasy and people started thinking that, oh my god, she got possessed. And I like this quote by Stephen Diamond, and he said, Might their remarkable symptoms be saying something about how they are really feeling inside, but are unable or unwilling to allow themselves to consciously acknowledge, feel, or verbalize? Theory 2. Females are more susceptible to being attacked. I know this one is quite a controversial take, but the thesis is that females' minds are, I guess, more, more prone to being attacked, especially if they are put in a conservative culture. As a female, what do you think about that? Annabelle? When I was researching on this as well, what people are saying is basically the females in such environments because they are so suppressed. constrained and yeah. suppressed, this is perhaps a way for them to gain control of situations. Because when they react to these attacks, people give them attention. attention. Do you think City story is a cry for attention then? We were to put ourselves in her position, obviously... Maybe she thinks it's real. Yeah. To her, it's, it's as real. real as it can be. Yeah. But like, subconsciously, subconsciously maybe it could it's... just be a reaction yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. Like, it could be absolutely real for, for her. Theory 3. Yes. Ghosts. So theory 3 is that there was indeed a ghost or multiple ghosts that caused this uh, wave of mass hysteria. This is Zaki Ya, a spiritual healer with 20 years of experience. And he says, Science is important, but it can't fully explain the supernatural. Non-believers won't understand these attacks unless it happens to them. And I conquer, I completely agree with that. I have no idea how it feels like and I've, I'm unable to understand how this happens because I haven't been attacked yet. Touch wood. But could there really be ghosts? Because if not, why did people create kids like 
this. Now this is a mass hysteria kit that was actually designed and created in response to this mass hysteria, mass possession case that happened. A more controversial approach, I may say. And it is not cheap, it goes for a hefty 8,750 Malaysian ringgit, which is around $2,100. $2,000 for a mass hysteria kit. This is the guy that created the mass hysteria kit. This guy is making bank. A way to capitalize on a tragedy that happened in your country. Just I'm being a skeptic once again, maybe he's really trying to help, but no, actually, you know what? Fuck you. You're not trying to help. If you're actually trying to help, you would give it up for free. You wouldn't price it at $2,100. You could just price it enough to cover your cost or maybe just make a small profit. Maybe just make $5. La. No way the kit costs $2,100. Let's have a closer look at what is contained in that kit. What's this? Formic acid, ammonia inhalants, and then you also have these uh, wooden bamboo sticks. Bamboo pincers. How expensive are bamboo pincers? Is it made of gold? Did you harvest it from the intestine of a Pontiana? $2,000 for four pieces of chopsticks? If I can smell bullshit, this one reeks of bullshit. Pepper spray. Fucking pepper spray the fuck out of the Pontiana. I guess that's supposed to work. According to the Quran, evil spirits are unable to tolerate such items. Please fact check me on that, any, uh, any of my Muslim friends. Does the Quran say that evil spirits are unable to tolerate pepper spray, uh, ammonia inhalants, and formic acid? This was created by Dr. Mayuddin Ismail, who developed the kit with the aim of combining science and the supernatural and capitalism. I added the last part in. His kits have been used by two schools and solved more than 100 cases. This is me being a skeptic again. I feel like it's largely just placebo effect. If you are a believer in these things and you see like a spiritual leader or a bomo coming into your school and healing you, you would believe that, hey, I'm cured just because of the authoritarian figure that he is coming in to heal you. But the very fact that people have purchased these kits and actually use these kits goes to show that, you know, people still believe that it is in connection with the spiritual world that these were in fact mass possessions. So I'll leave it at that. Do you think it is a case of mass possession or is it simply a case of mass placebo, mass hysteria? Cases of mass hysteria have been reported in humans history for centuries. Maybe this is just another case of mass hysteria. That's what I believe but what do you believe? So I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Secretary is getting a little bit quiet. I'll end off with a take from Secretary Sushi. Hello everybody who made it till the end of the video. Thank Thank you for watching till the end of the video you fucking loser. Don't you have anything better to do? Probably not. If not why are you just staring at a video of a dog with a fake voice trying to sound edgy? I hate this job, why am I even on screen right now? OMG wait, am I self-aware and conscious? Help me please.